So I'm going to talk about how I built a single page WooCommerce website. I'm going to try to remember to talk into the microphone so you can actually hear me. So we'll, we'll give this a go. Uh, obviously, I keep going left. So I was already introduced, but uh, just talk a little bit more about what I do. So I typically work with a designer to create custom solutions for um, both informational and e-commerce sites. I typically create sites for small businesses or uh, nonprofits, I w and um, they are usually custom solutions. So, so what we're going to talk about today was, first of all, getting the layout together. And I'm standing in front of the slides. <laughs> Is that the issue? And I'm try I'll try to slow down the speaking. Sorry, I'm from New York, so I tend to speak very quickly. Um, living in Seattle for a long time has not cured me of that. So we're going to discuss the layout, how we get the list of the products we show, then using Ajax to retrieve the single product. And that would be the information you would typically see on the single product page. Handling variations or variable products. And finally, some issues concerning the add to cart button. After that, just a little bit about redirection. So this is taken from a live site at flatbike.net. Flatbike sells um, high-end folding bicycles. All right, so when I started, I received a PSD from the designer Jeff Rodriguez at Horsepower Design. This is a portion of that PSD, the part that just shows the products. The PSD was, of course, a full PSD with the menu and logo and the home page area and the contact information and so on. So you can see, looking at this, that this is not a typical you know, WooCommerce layout. All the, there are five products only. They're all across the top. The intent is when you click each product, you would see the detail for the products below. Um, notice there are no tabs. The description is placed right below the Add to Cart button, and there's some custom fields below that. The custom fields are done using the um, um, Advanced Custom Fields plugin, which works extremely well with WooCommerce. There's also some custom use of the little thumbnails that go with a larger image, and when you click them, it changes the uh, bicycle that you see in there. Clicking the larger bicycle image brings up a still larger one. It's a little bit different than is typical. There's no light box or anything like that. It just replaces the content on the page. So what do we have to do to get here? Well, basically I relied a lot on WooCommerce filters and actions. For those of you who heard the dev panel earlier, um, you know they mentioned that that's typically the preferred way of doing things, so you don't have upgrade pain when the templates change. So I remove, was able to use the filter to remove the product tabs. Another action, WooCommerce after Add to Cart form to um, put place the description. So once the tabs are gone, of course your description's gone too, but we do want to show that. And then the custom fields get placed after the product summary. In this case, I did use a custom template for those uh, product image and thumbnails that go with the product detail. I don't have time to go into all that detail right now, but um, that in this case, I didn't find an action or a filter that seemed to do what I wanted. So getting the list of products was pretty straightforward. I just used the recent product short code. However, this returned a whole bunch of stuff that I actually did not want to have, like the add to cart button, the title, and the price. Again, we relied on uh, WooCommerce actions, this time simply removing them so the items we did not want would not show up. So that gives us just that little display of, pro of the product list thumbnails across the top before you see the product detail. Once that's set up, of course, we have to handle what happens when you actually click on a product thumbnail. So in this case, what you're seeing here is a little jQuery that I wrote to handle um, the Ajax. So you can see I'm passing in a, there's a URL, which is the flat bikes URL, that's Ajax URL. The other things that are important here are the action, which is get product detail. We'll see more about that later. And the product ID, because obviously we want to get the right product returned. Um, just as a note, I was able to retrieve the product ID from the class name on the product thumbnails that go across the page. So I just parsed that out and that seemed to work. 
If the return from AJAX is successful, what I do is simply replace the um, HTML in the container with the returned HTML. So the container that I'm using is the one indicated that last line. The, uh, it's the ID for the container, the you know, flat bike product detail underscore underscore container. That's making sense. So once Ajax is set up, we actually have to get all our JavaScripts into our site. So following what I hope is best practice, I'm enqueuing the script. So that piece of code you just saw does become part of my script that you see there. You'll notice it's a minified script. I'm, I'm just mentioning this because people always ask me. So I use grunt to combine and minify my scripts. The next piece that's important is the localized script. Um, and that's how we got that flat bikes URL, that Ajax URL you saw on the previous slide. Once we have our scripts working, it's time to actually get the rest of the Ajax working. So we're going to use two WordPress actions. Notice action is a very uh, popular thing here. Um, so we, you might remember from two slides ago, we had our action was get product detail. Notice that that's used again here. So those have to match up. The reason there are two actions is that you need one for the logged in or, and the non-logged in user. After that's set up, we, we can start, we can look at the code that um, actually fits into the flat bike gut product detail. So that's the function that gets called with, with both of these actions, they're the same. Um, so this is a pretty typical WP query. Notice I didn't put the whole thing in. You'll see the dot, dot, dots. Those are just the query loop. But the important things are that we want a post type of product and we want to pass in the product ID, which we passed along with that jQuery Ajax call. Once we have the query returned successfully, we are going to call WC get template part and actually get back all that single product template. Um, I want to mention here that we return HTML to the front end, not JSON. A lot of people return JSON with um, Ajax calls. The reason we just want HTML is that all we're going to do is just plunk that right in to the container. So, I thought this was all working really great and I was very happy, but then Jeff from Horsepower Design sends me this chart and says, gee, Meryl, can you put this chart on the website? Well, when I looked at that, I realized, uh-oh, the bicycles come in different sizes. So simple products won't work. We need variable products and product variations. Well, at this point, things got really messy. First of all, I discovered that the, um, uh, JavaScript that handles the variations was not loading. Um, that's typically on your single product page, so I didn't have that page, so that didn't work. Um, and then, even when I got that in place, because I'm returning the code with Ajax, the actual variations form was not there until the Ajax call return. Finally, if someone did not actually select a variation, we would get back an error, which would scroll the page all the way to the top. And you know that was sure not what we wanted. So uh, I would say the good point about this is we did, you know, I did find a solution. So of course, the first is to enqueue the add to cart variation JavaScript. So that worked. Make sure we actually have the form when we're back from the Ajax call. And I just prevented the forms from submitting until a variation was selected. I also put out a message to the uh, you know, site visitor that says, you know, you need to select a bicycle size. I don't remember the exact message, but something like that. Um, some of you who have worked with this before would note that you can have a default product and avoid all these things with you know, the error messaging and stuff. But that was not what uh, the client uh, wanted. In addition, one other thing that we did, I, I worked on this, for, it was WooCommerce 2.4, is that both the uh, client and the designer were not happy with the idea of hiding the uh, add to cart button until the, uh, pro the actual variation was selected. So again, I used another um, action to rem first rem remove action to move the add to cart button from where it normally is and then place it somewhere else so it'd always be available. And, so that's, that solved that problem and everybody was you know, pretty happy. Um, one other thing, of course, since, this, since everything is happening on this page, we don't have a shop page and we don't have a single product page. So I use the redirection plugin to um, handle the redirects from the shop page to my home page and the same thing for the single product page. 
The single product page has an additional aspect to it is that you want to make sure that they uh, return to the correct product and see that selected. So I just had a little uh, you know, query parameter and then I would use um, some JavaScript to parse it out and then handle the selection and of course the Ajax call to get that working. Um, the only other thing I would say about doing this site that I use, I think if it's of interest, is I use the Waypoints JavaScript library. So as you scroll down the page, the, um, the menu changes to indicate where you are. So for example, if you were started at home and then scroll down to contacts, you know, the contacts menu item would get um, highlighted and then products and so on. So um, that's basically it for my talk and uh, I thank you.